Okay, guys, very, very welcome back to the show. And I've got a very, very exciting guest today. She's a second generation wrestler featuring in such promotions like Pro Wrestling Noah, NWA, to name a few. It's Miss Jazzy Yang. Thanks for coming on today, Jazzy. Hey, thank you for having me. No problem. Look, I suppose we'll start, we kind of have to start with your dad, and that's probably how you decided to get into the business, I'm assuming. But if you want to just talk about your dad and how you decided to become a pro wrestler. Yeah, so I um, grew up around wrestling. That's all I've known. Like, everyone always asks me, like, what's it like having a wrestler as a dad? But for me, that was normal. That was my normal. He's just my dad. But when I was little, I got to be backstage a lot of the time, got to be around divas, other wrestlers, and really watching the divas like Melina, Mickey James, and watching like, I don't know, like the feminine side of wrestling, like the showy side. I fell in love with that part first. And in the beginning, I don't know, I throw a little, I love the like showy part, but I didn't like seeing my dad get beat up at all. Yeah. But then like, as I got older, um, I got the opportunity to debut in Japan when I was 15 years old. I started training and then I started to like it more because I love sports and everything. And it felt like a sport. It's a sport to me. And then I got to debut in Japan. And after the debut, like I caught the bug because like the adrenaline you get of being in front of fans and everything. There's nothing like it. Getting to travel the world and see a bunch of people is great. And then that was really what got me. And then after that, I've been training ever since yeah so for people that don't know i'll say your dad is jimmy wang yang that people will remember from wwe and i've been kind of keeping an eye on his social media is he still running the the party bus no actually uh so i was born in cincinnati ohio i don't know if you know where uh, ohio which is like yeah yeah midwest but once i graduated high school um, that's where the party bus was. My dad sold the party bus business and we moved back down uh, to Atlanta. Where his family is. So, yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. And in terms of training then, how influential was your dad and did he actually train you or what was your training process like? So I started training with my dad. Like I've just been trained by my dad this whole time with wrestling. So yeah, just my dad, which is a little bit, uh, tough because it's like your dad to like yeah me it's like training all the time 24 7 because i'm always with my dad and like you know how like people who play sports and they have the ride home with their dad or whatever yeah. but i get that like all the time so i hear all the opinions and feedback so yeah was that difficult then for you to kind of you know obviously have that relationship outside of wrestling as well um not really for, just like just like I said, it's, for me, it's normal. So that's all I know. Yeah. yeah. And in terms of who else trained you then? Was it just your dad involved or who did you meet along the lines? Yeah, mainly just my dad. But I did uh, train at the Nightmare Factory for a little bit when I lived over there. But then we moved again. So really, yeah. it's just been my dad. So, yeah. mm. And then I actually went... When I went to Pro Wrestling Noah, I actually trained at the Noah Dojo with the Young Boys for two weeks. So. Nice. Uh, in terms of Japan, then obviously you said you made your debut there when you were fifteen. Like it's it's really really physical over there, pro wrestling, and it's a lot different than it is in the states or even here in Europe. What's the biggest difference you find between wrestling in the states and in wrestling in Japan? For me, it's like uh, the like fans respect it so much more over there. And like they know the journey you have to go through. Like every and then every wrestler in Japan has to start from the bottom. Like you have to work your way. Up. Start as a young boy. Start like they strip you of everything, black tights, everything, and then you work your way up and add on and add on. Where in the states, really anybody can go out there and be on the Indies. That was yeah. Difference. Yeah. Is there anywhere on the bucket list then? Obviously, you'd probably like to wrestle over here in Europe as well. Wrestling is really, really hot in the UK and Ireland right now and, and across Europe as well. Yeah, I would love to go. I, I want to go everywhere. I want to experience everything. I want to go to Barcelona really bad. I'm <laughs> actually go going there. Next, I'm actually going there next week on holidays. Really? That yeah. Would be fun. I always yeah. see pictures. It looks so nice over there. I would love to go over there. Yeah, there's a lot of guys that I know here in Ireland that are wrestling as well. We actually had a massive show a couple of weeks back, uh, 2,200 people in our national stadium at an independent show. Oh. And a lot of those guys travel back and forth to Barcelona 
and Belgium and different places like that. So a couple of couple of weeks back, we had uh, who do we have? Nick Nemitz, who's now who was Dolph oh, yeah. Ziggler was there. Dan Housen from AEW, and in a couple of couple of months' time now, WWE have gifted our independents, uh, Finn Balor and JD McDonough, the two Irish guys, to appear at an independent show, which is pretty crazy. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. I would love yeah. to go to Ireland too. I, was, I want to go everywhere. So. Yeah, yeah. Who were your role models then? You talked about being around uh, people like Melina and that backstage in your younger days. Was there anyone that you really looked up to and aspired back then? Um. So of course, Mickey James, Melina, but when I like, I loved like the Funkadactyls. <laughs> I loved Total Divas, Funkadactyls. I dressed up as like Naomi all the time. Like that was my person I dressed up as. I did cheerleading for a little bit. So like for them, I saw the cheerleader. I was like, oh my gosh, I want to be like them. That's not, yeah. So yeah, I love Naomi. Yeah. And in terms of, in terms of the bucket lists in the States, obviously you've got the three big companies now. You're looking at Impact Wrestling, AEW, WWE. I'm sure they all appeal to you, but is there anyone in particular that you'd like to, to go to? Um, I would be grateful for any opportunity, but yeah. uh, I love watching NXT every week. Every week, like I love their women's division right now. I feel like it's really strong, so I would love to go there. Yeah. But I would also love to be on the main roster too. Love it. So really anything is a possibility, yeah. and I would love for any opportunity. Yeah, I feel like since uh, Triple H went in there, he's – like he was always doing good work in NXT, but I guess since Vince moved out of the picture now, he can really progress guys and bring them onto the roster when he's when he sees fit rather than when Vince sees fit. So it seems to be progressing nicely there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in terms of training then, so you're obviously doing at the moment you're based still in the States. So how many shows are you doing per week? Is it kind of a weekend thing? And what do you do then during the week? Do you have a job then as well? Yeah, so I have a shoot job during the week. Yeah. You know, uh, independent wrestling, you don't can't really pay bills off independent wrestling sure. most of the time. So I work Monday through Friday for a shift. I go to the I train every day, go to the gym every day, and then on the weekends I'll have Friday I'll have shows on Friday or Saturday, maybe both days, but normally like once or twice a week. Yeah. Do you find any pressure? Or is it a blessing in a way of being a second generation wrestler? Or does that ever factor into your thinking? It's both uh, good and bad. Um, having my dad there who's been through everything and seen it all. Like, I know I have someone in my corner that just wants the best for me at all times and able to steer me away from like bad decisions or stuff like that. And like, a, a big part of it is not having like, uh, the right mindset and for my dad who's been through it he can he's like programmed it, it into me since i was young but also it has it does have its down because every single opportunity i am going to get and i have done is like everyone's like oh she just got it because her dad we don't mm. want to give her an opportunity we don't want to give her opportunity she just is because her dad so every time i go out there i have a chip on my shoulder i'm like i have to prove these people that i do deserve these opportunities yeah i can so forth. I, I can see that being difficult at times as well when people people might see you on a show and get get that impression. But obviously you're putting the work in and you're happy where you are, so fuck them. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> um, Miranda Gordy, another second generation wrestler that you had the privilege of tag teaming with. How was that? That was fun. It was like uh, maybe two years ago, three years ago, three years ago now. It's crazy. I haven't seen her. In, I haven't actually haven't seen her since then. <laughs> He lives kind of far from me, but yeah. her brother Ray, Ray Gordy, Slam Master Jay, he like lives pretty close. So him, and my dads are cool. Him, and my dad are cool. So I see him sometimes. Yeah. yeah, I would love to tag with her again. I would love to wrestle her. That'd be great. Nice. And what kind of promotions are you working for then at the moment near you? So near me, there's a we have like a pretty big promotion in uh, Georgia called Classic City Wrestling, and it's like a rock concert and a pro wrestling show at the same time. So you like, they go match, rock rock band plays back and forth. And it's like the coolest thing ever. It's a lot of times like at a bar. So you get like the whole crowd is crazy and it's always really fun. And then coming up, I actually have on August 31st, 
I'm going back to Puerto Rico for WWC to fight for the Women's World Champion. Nice. That's another place I want to discuss with you. Similar to Japan in terms of the physicality, but could you describe what it's like being in the scene in Puerto Rico? Um, it's great. I met a lot of amazing women out there that are very athletic, very pretty. They all train together and they all help each other out. And like, I want them to be seen more. I think they all deserve more opportunities to come over to the States and wrestle because they were all amazing and they all train really hard. And it's really hot over there. So, even harder. Yeah. In in terms of any, is there anyone on the independent scene that you would love to wrestle with that you haven't? And aside from that, then as well, is there anyone on the the, the main rosters of the big companies that you'd like to have a match with? So on the independent scene, I want to wrestle Hema. She's a Puerto Rican wrestler. She wrestles for OVW a lot. I think she'd mm -hmm. be great. She's strong, athletic, everything. And then I also want to wrestle Ari Alexander. I don't know. She's on OVW too. I used to she used to train with us sometimes. And she used to train with us in Ohio. But now that I moved to Atlanta, I haven't seen her a lot. And I think it would be great to have a match with her because we haven't seen each other in a while. And then on the main roster for NXT, I want to wrestle Ariana Grace. I love her and all the character work she's doing. Love her. But really, anybody, I would be happy to experience and have a match with yeah. do you believe in joe henry yeah i guess <laughs> <laughs> i need to have a song like that i need to have a yeah <laughs> that guy is like doing some serious kind of marketing for himself my 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 five-year-old son is going around saying i believe in joe henry and he hasn't <laughs> even seen him wrestle he's only seen like yeah the, the clip of him playing but he does come to wrestling shows with me, my little guys as well, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> I wish I could sing. I wish I could sing. <laughs> you could do all these things man, with auto tune and things like that. Yeah, you could do yeah. <laughs> like Jojo Siwa. Yeah. Sing. The uh in terms of character development and things like that, was that anything that your dad talked to you about or did you just kind of figure out your own way of doing things? So my dad helped me a lot. Um so I was I first like started as like the show yang of wrestling that's like yeah. my moniker is like based off a show enough which is a character from a movie called the last dragon so my dad showed me that movie and i watched it fell in love with the character thought it'd be great for pro wrestling so i used that like that my dad taught me but also i'm gen z and i love tiktok i yeah. love all that stuff so i like to use that for me too and i use uh tiktok I make day in my life all the time for like as a professional wrestler because that's what I like yeah, to watch. Geez. And also, I'm Korean, so I like to, and I love K-pop, K-drama, so I kind of like to be like a K-idol, Korean idol too. So it's a mix of both. Yeah. Can you talk to me about your experience in Janela's spring break in 2022? Oh, it was good. so actually, this is my um, first. That was my first ever WrestleMania weekend. Yeah. And um, I never had like a spring break vacation. Like everyone goes on sp spring break in high school. So like this was my first experience of everyone like basically going on a spring break vacation together. So it's like crazy. I had like five shows and you're going off of like no sleep the whole weekend. And then the uh, spring break was at started at midnight. It started at midnight and I already had another show that day. So I'm like tired. And then uh, they had like three matches and then the battle royal, I get there and they're like, I'm like, how many people are in this? And they're like, 71. Oh my God. I was like, 71? Is that a real number or like over-exaggerated? No, it was a real number. <laughs> and at that point you just have to go with it and be like, fuck it, it's a clusterfuck, whatever they call it. Yeah. Everything's fine, everyone's having a great time and it was great and then they had an invisible man which was pretty funny pretty fun to watch and then they had like the woman's wrestling part which was cool i got i actually tapped out josh barnett in it so nice that was what, really fun. what time did that show finish up probably like three or four <laughs> my god i could imagine a lot of drunk people in there at that time yeah drunk high everything everything in between <laughs> exactly what you wanted the rest of the show 
Yeah. <laughs> I was looking online and I didn't read into details on it, but I seen the headlines and I said, asked, I was going to ask you, like, what was this story about you being afraid of CM Punk? I'm sure it was probably some kind of clickbait article. No, so when I was little, um, I was little, I would be in the back, like, I would be in the back with my dad. And yeah. I don't know why, but like, I saw CM Punk shave Serena Deeb's head, like, on live TV. So the next time I go there, when you're a little girl, like the biggest thing to you is your hair, like that. Yeah. So when I saw that, that was like the scariest thing to me. It gave me nightmares, everything. So when I saw him in person, I freaked out and I would hide behind my dad. Like I did not want to see this guy. I don't know why I thought he was going to shave my head, but that was so scary to me. So actually, <laughs> yeah, it's true. That's cool. Uh, if you're talking goals and aspirations for the rest of 2024, what what's on your agenda and what's your what do you hope to do? Um, uh, for the rest of 24, 2024, um, I'm still working a lot in the gym. I want to get my body perfect. Um, by the end of this year, I want to be ready. I want to be a hundred percent ready, a hundred percent undeniable to like any company. And I would love, uh, to go to Mexico or something like that. A new, a new country. Mm. And be potentially ready in January for a, a Royal Rumble appearance, another second yeah. generation superstar there we go we're putting it out there yeah. hopefully yeah uh jazzy i'd like to thank you for your time today i know we're kind of pushed for time here but if the fans want to keep in touch with you could you throw out your social media handles and i'll pop them underneath this video okay so jazzy yang on instagram jazzy wang yang on facebook and twitter and yun yun sauce three on tiktok <laughs> you think you're, i think i'm gonna have to keep going back over this video to find that one but uh yeah. we'll get or I'll get you to send it to Jake, maybe. That's a better idea. But Jazzy, <laughs> thanks a million for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you.